Yo guys, I'm HP, this is Dr. Pink, and today's topic is Spiderlex 2.0. What is this? Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button, and also join the HP Crazy Guitar Academy. So, what are we talking about today? You guys probably all know the Spiderlex technical exercise. <laughs> Well, this very first technical exercise which helps you beginners to, to get these movements from the hands away, you know, when, you, when your fingers go too far away, then probably every guitar teacher in the world recommends you to do the spider legs exercise where you just move one finger after each other and slowly and only move the finger which you are actually changing. You probably remember that exercise, or you're still doing that one. And it only goes upward because here, and it's really tough, and that's the fastest speed you probably can achieve. At least I can now go faster because it's really a com uncomfortable thing. Uh, but this exercise is not really meant for speed, it's meant for to, to get um, to stretch your fingers and to flatten your fingers. But after a while, and that's what this tutorial is about, the spider leg exercise um, has no use anymore because you cannot always do the same thing. There are more advanced exercises which have the same effect and from a certain level. And when you can do spider legs, this will be the next step to get more into the spider leg exercise thing, but getting more into advanced stuff. And now we're going to check out. When you do technical exercises, um, you probably notice that it's, you know, you just have to do them, repeat them, repeat them, repeat them. And for some of you, might it's annoying. And one thing you can do to make it more interesting or get the maximum benefit out of it is <coughs> to put more content into one exercise, including the, the, main, com the main goal plus additional content, okay? And <coughs> here, we have it. Once you can do the spider legs, once again from the near view, this exercise, you want to go to the next step and you probably are a little bit advanced here on the fretboard. Now we're going to want to do these ones here. So what are we doing here? I'm going to show it in, in detail. We're doing our pages, but string scaping our pages. And that's basically what we're doing to get the motion here of your fingers to flatten, because you really need to optimize the movement of your fingers to get this thing really down. And it looks easy, but it ain't. <laughs> So this is now a minor arpeggio based on the chord in C minor. And the arpeggio or the chord notes are these ones here. Here we start on the fifth, here's the root, here's the triad, here's the fifth, here's the root, the triad, the fifth and the high root. Now we skip, do sk uh, string skipping. We always skip one note. So from the fifth we go to the triad, from the root we go to the fifth from the triad we go to the root and so on and in order to do so you really need to check out your fingerings and have your fingers ready here and that this is the spider leg approach you know you really need to keep your fingers flat and alert and ready for the next step and these exercises, I just played it fast before to just show you what I'm talking about. But when you start with this, you really have to do it slowly. See? I would recommend this speed at the beginning. And that's the fingering for a minor chord, okay? And um, I also do altered picking here, so we have now the task for the fingering, which is basically Spider Legs 2.0, but 
Then we have an additional task here. We have alternate picking. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. So you do alternate picking and you, you learn to, to do stringscaping with alternate picking and to be really precise. So take your time on these exercises. The third task which I want to put onto this, we are doing so-called diatonic chord progressions in minor, in this case C minor. What is that? The, if you, if you want to play the, this is the C minor, the C minor um, scale, Aeolian or in on one string. Every note has an uh, associated chord. So we have C minor, we have D ma diminished, C, uh, E flat major, F minor. Uh, here we do G major, uh, A flat major, B flat major, and C minor. So we have basically three shapes. We have the minor shape, we have the diminished shape, and we have the major shape. So now we're playing the minor shape here on C minor. This will be this one here. Okay, that was the minor shape. Now comes the diminished shape here. That's the hardest one, <laughs> I must say, the of D minor. It goes like this. See, it's really, that one is really tough really pushes your fingerings down. When you do these exercises, make them slowly and each exercise at least two times. If you do it only once in a row, um, the your muscle memory doesn't build up. You need to do two repeats and then just keep it going over weeks and months and then your muscle memory will build up that you're able to, you know... <laughs> yeah, oopsie. <laughs> I didn't do a warm-up. Okay, so that will be the D diminished. Next one will be the E flat major and this fingering is like this. Here we have uh, the problem here with these three notes on the D, G and B string and here you have to make a bar. And while you do this, you keep the position of the finger but then you start rolling it down. This has to go, go in a smooth motion. Okay. Also when you come back down, you already go in position. See, so you just have then this little motion here. And that's, that's to be really learned to have the muscle memory to do exactly what is needed. And even if you never play some stuff like that in a solo, this is helps you a lot to make your finger more flat, okay? After the E flat, we're coming with the F minor. Same shape, F C minor. major same shape of E flat but what changes now when the more up you come the less space you have here that's also a thing which has to be practiced A flat major same shape B flat major same shape and C minor same shape as below, but now with way less space. That one is, for my big hands, quite challenging. Okay, so that will be one row and that one you do twice, okay? You can also, that was now the A-type chords, okay? You can also do the same thing on, um, on uh, major progressions. But since then, then in this case in C major, then we have C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and 
B diminished and C major. Same thing, same shapes, just the other, the other progression. Now we do the E type um, chord figures, in this case in G minor, coming from these chords, G minor to um, A diminished, to B flat major, to C minor, to D major, now it gets a bit tough for my big hands, E flat major, F, I cannot do this anymore up here, F major, and uh, G minor, that's, I don't have space with my hands up here for the bar. So these are now the chords which we're doing the same exercise now, S string skipping, and here, same thing again, S start with the root, go on the fifth, try it on the root, fifth, try it, fifth, uh, root, fifth, try it, root, fifth, uh, till the till the try it, and then you go back. And here again, we have two bars here. We have one here and one here. So you learn to follow with the fingers. Okay, that was, that was the shape of the minor. Here comes already the one of the diminished, and again, this one is the hardest of them, probably also because you don't use it so often. That goes like this. Here again, you need to have the bar ready in order to do so. Okay, next will be B flat major. Now we have a different shape. Goes like this. Now we have a problem here. We have to jump back. We are starting here with then this one you take with the middle finger. Again, we have the bar here. And from here on, you need to go back here with the index finger. From here again, when you come back, you again move from here from to here with one finger. Okay. Then comes the C minor. And so on. Then um, we have the G flat, G flat major. No. We have the D major. E flat major. Again, same challenge. The higher up you get, the less space you have. F major. And finally, G minor up here, which is already quite tough for me. But this also helps you to, to move better in high positions, even you, if you will never use something like this in the, this upper position. You see, I already have difficulties because my hands are way too big for this stuff up here. Good, so these were the two easy ones. There was the A-type chords, the, the E-type chords. Now comes the C-type chord, and that's um, the toughest of them. Um, I only recommend that if you're already quite comfortable with the C type, with the <laughs> with the A type and the E type. If you're comfortable with that, you probably want to move on to the C type. And again, we we're doing the minor progression, which will be here D mi uh, G minor, no D minor. As that C type chords. Then we have E diminished. Yeah, it's really hard to grab. Then we have um, F major. Then we have G minor. Then we have a blah, 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 blah. A major. We have B flat major. C, C major. And at the end, D minor. So these ones, but these are really tough. 
they <clears throat> because they start here on the on the tr uh, triad here down here go to the root then comes the fifth then comes the triad then comes the root the fifth the triad the root the fifth the triad the root the fifth so and you really need to move up to get your fingering down okay as I said only do this if you can do the A and E type chords because before it's really too tough and I can already tell you by now when you come up here I cannot do it anymore because uh, as I said I have two big fingers if you have small fingers you probably still be able to do it but I show you so G minor uh, D minor and see you here have this make this movement here Now comes the hardest one again, the diminished. <laughs> here you have the the bar is here. Oopsie. Now comes the major shape, that is like this, uh, the F major. But this stuff is done really advanced stuff. As I said, only do this if you went through the prior ones and you're able to do the, the them. Then we have the, um, where were we? We have the G major. The fingering doesn't change. Then we have the uh, A flat major. No, wait, 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 I'm talking rubbish here. We have the G minor here. Now comes the A major up here. Comes the B flat major. Now it's getting tough for me. But still keep on trying because trying to get your fingers down here in the high position, even if you cannot really play it completely properly, helps you a lot to get more uh, control of your grabbing hand in lower positions. Let me uh, C major, that's going to be. Oopsie. That's really tough. And at the end, the G D minor, which is literally impossible for me up here. Somehow, I'm still working on that one. Yo, these were the exercises. Yo, this was the Spider Leg 2.0 um, exercise. And as some of you guys probably did the the original spider leg exercise over one or two or three years just to have the motion here to get your fingers down on the fretboard this exercise will take you months years I'm doing this since long long time and still if I don't have the proper warm-up if or if I don't do them for a while and come back I still need my time to get my fingers moving again but when even you never or rarely use that stuff in any solo it really helps you to to really um, have a way better feeling for the fretboard and as I already said if you do the stuff in the high position which is really challenging and I strongly recommend do it slow but without mistakes if possible I was just doing fast to get finished with this tutorial but Really, keep your time. You know, 
that you can do it properly in this then you get the biggest benefit out of these exercises and this really trains your grabbing hand in a way and you you're working out arpeggios at the same time these shapes al also help you for the regular arpeggios you know you know there's the same shapes basically and that's what I told at the beginning. When you do advanced exercises, you can put in like up to three or four tasks at the same time. Um, and you just keep it going, repeat it, repeat it slowly, but still keep pay attention to each task which um, you put into the exercise um, to get the maximum benefit because you cannot, as I already said, you cannot do this exercise like for two weeks and say, okay, I'm finished with that. This is something which takes you, as I said, months, maybe years, but it really helps and brings you to, to a next level of your technical abilities on the fretboard with your grabbing hand, but also your picking hand. Because also the, the picking is challenging if you want to do alternate picking on the string skipping thing also is a challenge with the complex forms which you have to grab so um, yeah good um, I wrote down these exercises if it was too fast for you um, <coughs> and as PDFs it's available in for free in the HP Crazy Guitar Academy please join there uh, you get it there um, if you have any questions about this you can also ask there if you want to have more detailed professional guidance on this but basically that's that's in a short form what this is all about and this in combination with other technical exercises will take you to the next level you know when you start with doing technical exercises you reach a plateau you know when you can do spider legs you can do pentatonics a bit <laughs> then you want to go to the next level and that next plateau is way higher and way more challenging so uh, some proper um, guidance is needed to get there and uh, to see the benefit out of it and to also get this into the regular playing you know because most players are stuck into pos pentatonic position number one because that's the one where they learned first and if you're going to break out of these these um, patterns that's really a challenge. And these exercises help you to work on the next level. Yo, that's all me and Dr. Pinker having to say. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you loved it, please subscribe to my channel. Please join the HB Crazy Guitar Academy. Me and Dr. Pinker saying goodbye for today. <laughs>